welcome to Adobe Live. I'm so excited to be here. We are kicking off a new series here called Video Editing 101. And I am your host, Shireen. So today we are gonna be going into Illustrator, After Effects, and Premiere. And you're gonna be learning how to create an intro graphic, motion graphic for YouTube. So let's hop on into Illustrator and let's get started. And by the way, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, please make sure to join us over on Behance. That is behance.net slash Adobe Live. And you can join us in the chat pod over there. So we've got Christelle in the chat. Good morning. Mercurial, Cody, Rick. Hello from Toronto. Hey. We've also got Steve in the chat and Norsh. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are at. For me, it's currently in the morning. I've got some green tea. So yeah, let's get into Illustrator. So the first thing that I have open here, as you'll see, are a bunch of different icons and text and all that. So let's start off with the outro graphic. And I'll just give you a quick run through of what the dimensions and everything are for that. So for your outro on YouTube, it's gonna be 1920 by 1080 pixels for the whole screen size. But when you are designing your graphics for that, you wanna keep in mind that with YouTube, there's this safe zone. So it's this smaller rectangular area where these are the places where you can put your elements like the subscribe circle or the watch next video. So that dimension is 1832 by 776 pixels. Now, when you're designing for the actual icons that are in there, the video rectangle is 622 by 351 pixels, and the subscribe circle is 297 pixels. So just keep that in mind. But we're actually going to start with the intro. So let's talk about that. At the top left, you'll see that I have this design. So let me give you some context. This intro is for my Unfiltered Beauty series on YouTube, which is part of my Adobe Creative Residency projects. It's my main project, and the first episode is actually already out on my YouTube channel. You can check it out, and you can see the full intro and outro in full effect. But I'm going to walk you through how I made that. So when I'm designing, the first thing that I want to think about is, okay, what's important here? What am I trying to convey? What is the message? So. What I started doing was coming up with a list of words to describe the series and what I was trying to convey. So off the top of my head, the first things that came to mind were minimal, clean, unfiltered, transparency. Um, and those were like the main ones. So I'm like, okay, how can I combine all of these things and make it into a cohesive design? I knew I wanted it to be clean and minimal but still a little bit colorful. And since the series is about taking you behind the scenes of the beauty industry and kind of a little bit about the impact of filters on mental health and all of that, I wanted to have this play on words where you would see the actual filters. So kind of like Instagram filters. And then you would also see the text on screen saying unfiltered beauty, which is the name of the series. So I was like, okay, let's make some filter looking icons. So that is what I did over here. So let's go through how I designed these. You'll see that right now, if I click right here, these are grouped together, right? So if I drag them out, they're both moving, but they're actually two separate elements that I grouped into one. So let me just drag this over. I'm pressing option and dragging this over so that we can copy it. And what I'm gonna do is ungroup this. So right click, ungroup. And now you'll see these are the two elements that I grouped together to make this little filter. So let's go through how to make that. What I'm gonna do is go over here and press and hold so we can select the rectangle tool. Now with that selected, what I'm gonna do is press once. So just click and it'll bring up this box. And now we can put in the exact dimensions that we want our rectangle to be. So this is how you can make sure you're getting a really precise rectangle. So I'll do 150 by 150 pixels and press OK. And now we have a square. So what I can do now is change the colors. So 
let's say I want to change this to a different color. I'll just go over here, double click, and let's just do this teal color. And there we go. Now we have that changed. So for this filter part underneath it, what I'm going to do, what I could do is just press and hold and drag to create a box. And you'll see it'll snap to your rectangle that you already, or your square that you already made. It's saying intersect. That's how you know, okay, this is going to be a perfect fit with the shape above it. So that's one way you could do it. Again, if you want it to be more precise, you could just press and just click once and you could do a custom uh, aspect ratio. So for this one, let's say, let's say that's fine. 150 by 50 pixels. We'll press okay. And there you go. So actually, I think I made a perfect little rectangle down here for that. Those are the actual dimensions I wanted to go to, to go for. Cool. <laughs> okay, so now to change this to a gray color, I will go over here again, just double click, and we'll just go to some gray color. If you know your hex code, by the way, you could also put this in right here. So let's say I know that I want this to be C, 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 C. <laughs> And that is the exact shade of gray that I want. So now I will press OK, and there we go. So I'm going to go up here to the, the selection tool. I'm going to select this rectangle right here, this teal one. I don't want it. I'm just going to press delete. I'm going to drag over this gray one, and you'll see. Let me just zoom in so you can see a little bit better. So you'll see as I'm dragging this over, it is snapping to the center point of the square that we made above. So if I drag this up, you'll see this line comes up that says intersect. And that's how you know, if I let go, they're gonna be perfectly flush next to each other. So that is very cool. So now what we can do is group these together. So I'm gonna drag and hold, and now both of these have been selected. I'm gonna right click and press group. So now I can move this however I want and they won't be separated. So Let's say I want to make more filters. I'm going to press Option and then drag this over, and that will duplicate this. So I'm just going to do this a bunch of times, and let's just let's just do five for now. I'm just going to bring these up a little bit so they're all aligned. And right now the spacing isn't even. I'll show you how to fix that in a sec. Let's just change these colors real quick. So I'll just go here. And another thing you can do is select this eyedropper tool right here. So I'm going to press this and let's say you want this to be green. And I'll do that. But you'll see that now they have both become green. So if we only want to make this top box green, what we're going to do is I'm going to press Command Z so I can go back. I'm going to press this right here. This is the direct selection tool. So this allows you to choose just one element, even if they're grouped together. So I'm going to press the eyedropper tool and make this green. And then I'll just zoom out and let's do that to the rest of these filters real quick. All right, so now we have a good starting point. What I'm going to do is get rid of this one right here, just select and press delete. So now let's tidy up this spacing between these different filters. So I'm going to press and hold and drag over all of them to select them. Now to the right, you're going to see this align panel. What you're going to do is press these three dots. And then down here where it says distribute spacing, you can pr just press that button and it'll evenly space them out. So you have an option for horizontal distribute space or vertical distribute space. I'm going to do horizontal and you'll see with one click, it has now shifted them all and they are spaced out evenly. So that is looking good. Now I will right click on this and I'm gonna group them. So now let's center this. So again, with a line, you can horizontal align center and then vertical align center. And that is now perfectly centered in our composition. But I do know that I want to add text, but that is something that we will get into in After Effects. Within Illustrator, I just want to get a general kind of idea of what this is looking like and just build out my icons. All I'm going to do here is make my icons and then export them out so that I can take them into After Effects. So the next thing that I need to make is a mouse icon. So to do this, let me just zoom in again. 
what you can do is use shape tools. So over here, we're going to go and press and hold and then select the polygon tool. Now, again, if you just press once, it'll bring up this box and you can decide what custom radius and how many sides you want for this polygon. So you can go up to as many as you want, but I know I want a triangle, so I'm just going to do three sides. So there we go. And now I have a triangle, but I want to curve this up a little bit. So to do that, I need to add a point to the rectangle. So you see right now it has one, two, three points. I want to add another one right here in the center. So we're going to go up here. This is your pen tool. And then right here, I'm going to add a point. So now what we can do is go back here to our direct selection tool, press and hold this up. And right now you'll see it's a very sharp point. I want to smooth that out. So I'm going to go back and just select this point. And then right here where it says convert, I'm going to make it into a smooth point. And now it is curved. So going back to our shapes, I'm going to select the rectangle tool and I'm just going to create a small rectangle, something like this to complete our mouse. But let's say for whatever reason you decided when you were making this, that it's going to be a different color. And now you want to combine them, right? So what you can do is select them both and go over to Pathfinder. And I'm going to select this first one. So this will now merge them both into one shape. And you'll see it has taken that blue color. And if we press on this, let me just go over to Direct Selection to bring up these points. You'll see that all these points have been made. And this is now one shape instead of being two. So you can, again, change the color to whatever you want. I'm just going to make it a black mouse. And then from here, if you wanted to, you can press shift and drag in the corners to scale it evenly. So let's say I want to do something like this. And then if you want to rotate 45 degrees each time, we'll press and hold shift and then just turn like that. And you'll see now it has been turned to 45 degrees. I can do it again. It'll do 90 and so on and so forth. So let's say I want to do something like 45. I'll just keep it there. And then while I'm shift, still, I'm going to just scale it down a little bit. All right. So now we have our main elements. What I'm going to do to export these out is have this selected because I just want to export the mouse. And then I'm going to right click and we will go to export selection. And now you'll see this mouse icon has been selected and we can go ahead and just press export asset and this will export. So right now I have this set to a PNG format, which is exactly what I want. So if I went ahead and pressed export, we would have a PNG icon of the mouse. I already have this, as you can see up here, this first one. So I'm just gonna press cancel. And then for the icons, you would do the same thing. Just press and hold, select all of these, and then right click, export selection. And right here, asset 14 is where that is at. And you can just export that as a PNG. So that is all that we really need for Illustrator. We have made our icons. Now what we're going to do is hop on over to After Effects. This is where the fun part begins. <laughs> So if you have never used After Effects before and you find it very intimidating, no worries. I'm going to walk you through it and it's going to be real simple. We're keeping it light. So I'm just going to play this for you so you can see what this intro graphic looks like. Oop, there we go. <laughs> All right. We'll just let that loop a little bit and I'll talk you through what is going on here. So you'll see I have that mouse coming in and it's selecting different filters. And then as it is selecting those, that filter effect is showing on screen. And then we have the final filters chosen, which is no filter. And then you see the unfiltered beauty name comes down and then it switches to brand. And the reason why it says brand is because this is something that I want to be able to change once I am in Premiere. So 
as I mentioned, this is a series and each series is with a different brand. So I want to be able to go in and type in that brand name and just change it out as needed. So what I'm going to do is create a new project. So let's go up here to file new project. Sean says a folder named Queen Shireen. <laughs> hey, I, I named my folder Queen Shireen, you know? That's how I stay organized. <laughs> Um, so, okay, we have a screen right here in After Effects where we can start a new composition. So I'm going to press New Composition, and let's just call this Unfiltered Beauty Intro Demo. And the width is 1920, height is 1080, and that is perfectly fine. And I will press OK. All right. So now you'll see we have this white background. What I like to do in general is go ahead and create another white background just for sanity and organization purposes. I like to see what I'm working with. So I'm gonna right click down here and I'll go to new and solid. So this will allow us to create a solid colored background basically. So right now you'll see it is set to this pink color. I'm just gonna press once and go over to white and press OK. And then I'll just call this white BG for background and I'll press OK. So now you'll see, well, you can't really see, but it did add a white background to this. And if you wanted to change this, the shortcut is, I believe, Command Shift Y. Yeah, there we go. Command Shift Y. So now you can go in here and you can use the eyedropper tool to select whatever color you want, or you can just press here and then change the color. And that's a really quick and easy way to change out this background color in case you want to see what different color options look like. So I'm going to press cancel. You know what? Actually, no. Let's change this back to white. <laughs> all right. And then I'll press OK. So now what you want to do is bring in all your different icons and stuff like that. So let me bring up my folder here. Let's see. We'll go to icons. And I'm going to bring in this one right here. These are my filters. I'm going to bring this over like that. Awesome. And then I'm also going to bring in my mouse icon. So drag and drop. And now they have been added into After Effects. So now what we want to do is change up the positioning a little bit. So let's just toggle this down right here. And we will go over to position. So you'll see you can change the X and Y axis of all of these. So I'm going to press Command Z to bring this back to what we were at. And I'm just going to bring down the Y position ever so slightly. Let's do something like 670. And then for the mouse, I want to reposition this as well. So I'm going to toggle this down so we can see all of our different elements over here. And let me just scale this down. Let's do maybe like 70%. We'll start with that, see what that looks like. And I'm gonna change the X and Y axis to have it start somewhere at the bottom right, something like here. And the mouse is a little bit too big, I think. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller. Let's do something like 65. Let's try 60. Okay, I think that's good. So now I'm going to press this little icon again to close these up and tidy this up. What I want to do now is add the text that says unfiltered beauty. So two ways to do this. You can go to new, we'll right click new text, and that will bring up the ability to add text unfiltered beauty. All right. Or alternatively, you could go up here and just select the text tool and then press in here and then create new text. So I'm gonna go up here to our selection tool and then bring this over a little bit. Or alternatively, what I could do to make sure that it is perfectly aligned to the center is go up here to align and then press these two icons to align vertically and have it centered and aligned horizontally as well. So now you'll see this is perfectly in the center, but I don't want it there. I want to bring it up a little bit and also maybe scale it up so that it fits the width of these icons. 
So again, we will go over here and just toggle down to bring up our different effects. So I'll go to transform and I'm going to bring up the Y position. Let's start somewhere around here. And then I can also scale it up by pressing and dragging to the right. And this will scale this up. So again, to make sure that we are centered, I will do something like this. Press these align buttons to center it because I really want to make sure that that text is really flush with the um, icons in terms of width. So I'm going to scale this down a bit. And again, I will center and see what we're working with. OK, so now I need to scale it up a little bit. So let's try 140. And just bring it down ever so slightly. So now I'll do something like a 138. This is where you can get really nitpicky with it and just take your time, make it all custom. So that's looking good. What I'm gonna do is now bring up the Y position so there's some space between the icons and the text. So let's say I wanna bring the text somewhere up to here and then I'll also go back to the icons and I will also bring up this Y position ever so slightly. We'll do something maybe like mm, 635. Okay, looking good. Something else that you can do to help yourself stay organized within your layers is right click and then press rename. So you'll see the way it is right now, it can be a little bit confusing. I'm not sure if I'm selecting the icons or the mouse. So I'll just rename this to filter icons. And then I'll go to this next one, right click, rename, and I will select the name mouse. So let me just type that in. Boom, there we go. And I just press enter to lock in those changes. So now what I want to do is animate that mouse to select those filters. So what we're going to do is toggle this up to close it and then toggle down the mouse. So now you'll see this stopwatch icon next to all these different effects. So what that allows us to do is add a keyframe. A keyframe essentially locks in the exact position, scale, rotation, whatever sort of effect that you are selecting, it will lock it in at that exact point in time on your timeline and you can animate that way. So let me show you what I mean. So what I'm gonna do is start off right here at uh, zero, zero seconds in the timeline and I will just create a position keyframe right here by pressing the stopwatch icon. Now you'll see in our timeline, I just drag over a little bit, you'll see this blue diamond was created. So that means that we have added a keyframe over to our mouse. So now I'm gonna just go forward. Let's do something like 12 seconds. So what I'm gonna do is just reposition this by changing the X and Y axis. So I'm dragging this up and then to the left and I'm just going to press and hold, keep dragging. So let's say I want to land on this blue icon first. So you'll see this line has been created now from our original starting point to this blue one. And as we were changing that positioning, After Effects added another keyframe to the timeline for us. So now what I want to do is make sure that that mouse kind of stays there for a second, because if it doesn't, it'll just keep going and going. It won't look as smooth of an effect. I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go back to this 12 second frame and I'll just use my keyboard to tab over. You know what? It is not working. I'm just going to use my mouse. <laughs> I'm just going to press and hold to select this playhead and I'll just scrub forward one, two, three, four, five frames. And then I will press this diamond icon right here to the left to add another keyframe. Now, we didn't change any of the positioning or anything, right? And that's fine. We want to make sure that we have that in there. So it basically locks in our animation right there for those five seconds. Now I'm going to scrub forward again. We'll go over to one minute or one second and 12 milliseconds. <laughs> And I will now drag over that mouse again 
to the left. So now I'm gonna go over to this orange filter. So now you'll see a line has been created, again, showing the path of our animation. So let me just play this back for you and you will see what this is looking like so far. All right, looking good, right? So you'll see, let me just play this again. These two keyframes that we added right here, that is what is causing it to kind of pause on that blue filter for those few seconds. So now let's go back here to 112, and then I'm just gonna, again, select and hold the playhead and go over five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. And then I will, again, press this icon right here to add a keyframe. And I'm just gonna keep going forward, but you know what? Let me go forward and let me show you what it would look like if we didn't add the second keyframe to lock in the positioning. So let me keep going. We'll go over to this pink icon. And then let's just go over to 312. And I'll go over to the last filter icon that I want to select. All right, so now if I play this back, you're gonna see it's gonna go straight from that pink one over to that last one, and it'll just be way too quick. So let's see what that looks like. See, it just kept going. It was like, pink, we don't like you today. We're just gonna keep going next. <laughs> but we do like pink. So we're gonna go back and make sure that we stay on her for a little bit. So I'm gonna go back over here. This is where we have the keyframe for the pink. And we're gonna go over one, two, three. Hmm. Let's see. Let me select this actually. Let me see what the positioning was at. Okay, so 720 and then 767 for the X and Y axis. So one, two, three, four. Ah! <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna change the position to 720 and then 767, that is fine. And let's play this back. All right, much better. So that's looking good. Now what we can do is go back and add some extra oomph to this. So you know how when you press a mouse, it will kind of like get smaller a little bit and then get bigger. I mean, it might not always, but for animation purposes, it just adds that extra level of niceness to your design. <laughs> so we are going to do that. So every time it presses a filter, we're going to make our mouse a little bit smaller. So let's scrub over to the point where we first press. And that's going to be where this keyframe is at, the second one. So what I'm going to do is select this right here, this keyframe icon, the stopwatch. To add a keyframe, you're going to keep it at the scale that it is at right now. So right now it's at 60. What I'm going to do next is just hover over to, or scrub over to the center point between these keyframes right here. And I will scale this down to, let's do 50, and we'll see what that looks like. So that has made our mouse smaller, and we will go back to this next keyframe and just line those up, and we'll bring this back to... 60 for the scale. So let's play this back and let's see how that's looking. Did you see that? You see how it just kind of like presses and it gets smaller? Let me play that again. Oop, there we go. Looking good. So we will just continue to do that for these next sets of keyframes. So we'll scrub over, we'll go to our next one. And then for scale, we will add another keyframe again by just pressing this icon over to the left diamond one and then go to the center point between these two keyframes and then bring down the scale to 50 and then I'll go over align it with this keyframe and then bring this back up to 60 percent all right and then we'll just do this for the next one as well align the keyframe positioning add a keyframe right here Scrub over to the center. We'll make this 50%. And then we'll go to the end and we will do 
60% and bring it back up. And then we'll do the same thing right here and add another keyframe for 60, scrub forward a little bit. You'll see here, we don't have keyframes because in this case, our mouse isn't really going anywhere else. And that's the final position. So you don't really have much of a keyframe reference to go in terms of an ending point, but you can just eyeball it, no big deal. So I will just bring this down to 50% and I'll just scrub over a few more frames and bring this back up to 60. So let's play this again from the beginning and see what this is looking like. Looks good. So now what I want to do is, let's say we want to scrub over to the four second point. So that is where my playhead is at. What we want to do next is animate this so that our filter and the mouse are being brought down and going off screen. And then also have the text that says unfiltered beauty go down and basically become centered in the frame. And before we do that, let's pop on over to the chat and see what's going on. So Cody Bear says, I love learning about After Effects. It's so useful. Great explanation. And a smaller mouse point is a great way to animate a click. They used to do that on Dora the Explorer. <laughs> Good to know. I never really paid attention to that, but I think that's a really great point. Yeah, it's a really great way to animate mouse clicks for sure. Um, Mercurial says, I miss everyone here. We are so glad to have you back. Welcome. <laughs> and we also have Annika in the chat. I am so glad you're here. You almost missed this, but I'm glad you didn't. Hello. <laughs> and no worries if you guys need to hop off for a sec, you can always come back and watch the replay. All right, so let's go back to After Effects and let's bring down that filter. So again, what we're gonna do is go over to our position so what I'm going to do is first add another keyframe right here, because if I don't, it'll start animating from here and it won't have that pause and then go down. It'll just go into the animation, go down. Does that make sense? So I'm going to select this keyframe, just add another one with the same exact positioning, and then I'll move forward a little bit. Let's go over to 412. And I will just bring down the Y axis just like that. And then I'll do the same thing for the filter icons. So I'm going to toggle this down to bring up our different effects within transform. And I'll just bring my playhead back to four seconds where we added that first keyframe for the mouse to go down. And I will add a keyframe for the filters. So the position is good where it's at. I'm going to press the stopwatch icon to create a keyframe and I will scrub forward to 412 where our other keyframe is at. And I will bring down the Y positioning by just hovering over it and then pressing and then dragging to the right. So now, just like that, it has gone off screen. So now when I play this back, what I'm going to be looking for is seeing if the mouse and the filter are going down at more or less the same time. And if they're not, we can go back and adjust the keyframes so it looks like a more smooth transition. So let's just give this little section a watch. Okay, so you see the mouse is lagging behind a little bit. Let me just play that again. You see how it's kind of like going into the middle of that icon right there. What I'm gonna do is just bring back this endpoint filter, not filter, keyframe. <laughs> I'll drag this back somewhere, kind of like here. And you'll see as I'm dragging this over, it's changing the positioning. So I know that the mouse should be somewhere around here. And now if I play this, that's looking smoother. So now what we want to do is bring down the text that says unfiltered beauty. What I'm going to do is just close these up real quick for mouse and filter icons just so we have a cleaner workspace and I will toggle down for unfiltered beauty. So now we're going to go back to, you know what, actually let's open this up so I can make sure my keyframes are at the exact right spot. So for this one, this started going down at around four seconds, right? So we know that 
around four seconds. We also want this text to start going down. So I'm going to line up my playhead with this keyframe so that when I go to add a keyframe in this unfiltered beauty text area, I can make sure that they are aligned. So let's just add a keyframe to begin with for this start position by pressing the stopwatch. And I will scrub over to where this keyframe is at. And I am going to just align the text to the center by using my align tools over to the top right over here. So we'll do this, make sure everything is perfectly aligned. And now it is centered and a keyframe has automatically been added for us. So you'll see right there, we have that keyframe. So let's play this back and let's see how this is looking. All right, looks smooth, looks good. So now let's say we'll go over to about five seconds. And we know that we want the unfiltered beauty text to end here. So if I go all the way to the right over here and I hover over this red line, you'll see these two arrows pop up. So if I press and hold, I can now drag in that line and the unfiltered beauty text will stop at five seconds. That is our end point. So let me toggle these up. And what we're gonna do next is add more text. So now is where that brand name part comes into play. So I'm going to right click, press new text, and we will just call this brand name. And then again, with our align tools, we're just gonna perfectly align this to the center. And then what I can do is scale up the text a little bit. So let me go back to unfiltered beauty. Let me see what I scaled this up to. So I scaled this up to 138%. I'll just go ahead and do the same thing for the brand name. So we will toggle down where it says transform and I will press and change the scale to 138. Boom. So again, we will just center our align. And now again, we have this perfectly aligned in the center. So I'm gonna scrub over to this front part now. And again, the same way that we basically made our unfiltered beauty text shorter, we are going to drag this in so that the start point will be right when that unfiltered beauty text ends. So now if I just scrub in the timeline, you'll see it goes from unfiltered beauty to brand name. So let's say we want this to be on screen for, mm, I don't know, like a second. So I will go over to the end, just drag this over by clicking on it and bring this over to around six seconds. So now it'll say unfiltered beauty, brand name for one second, and that is it. Let's play that back. Let's see if that's a little bit too short. Maybe we need two seconds. Let's just play the whole thing and see how it's looking. Okay, I think one second is fine. So to make our animation six seconds long, I'm gonna go over here and for area end will come up with this little arrow icon and I'm just gonna press and hold and drag this over and snap it over to the end. And then same thing with this one right here. And now it has been changed to six seconds long. So now let's play this again from the beginning. Okay, so if you pay attention to the arrows, you'll see they're being a little bit wonky. Do you see how when it's going to the pink and the black one, it's not really like, like it kind of goes back a little bit. Like, so the reason why it did that is because when I was adding in those keyframes, remember how I wanted to show you what it would look like if I didn't add those keyframes to make it stop. When I go back in and I add those keyframes, like when I don't go in order, it'll do that. So what we're going to do is go back and just clean those up. So I am going to toggle up this text and let's go back to a mouse. So I'm going to bring up these controls and we will go back to this pink one. So this one was around two seconds, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm just going to press and drag over these icons to select them. Now you'll see these four keyframes have been selected. What I'm going to do from here is just press delete 
boom, just like that. And we will work our way back to the end of the animation. So let's go over here to this keyframe and I will, let's see. Okay, so it got bigger. Okay, what we're gonna do now is, let me watch this again. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, okay. So what I'm gonna do is add another keyframe to keep the position where it's at. And then we'll go over here to our next set of keyframes and I will drag this over just like this. I'll continue dragging over so we have our X position in the middle of this black icon. And then I will go over here to snap it with this last keyframe. And I will add another keyframe just to lock in our position. I'm not changing the X or Y axis here. And then what we wanted to do was bring it down, right? So you'll see this is going down. So now what I'm gonna do is toggle down the filter icons so I can see what my keyframes were for that and try to match them up for this mouse. So around here is the start point of when the filters start going down. So I know that right here, I want to add another keyframe without changing any of the elements. And then I will just scrub forward a few frames and bring down the Y position again by just hovering over this and then clicking and dragging my mouse over to the right. So I'll bring it down all the way to here and then we can go back in and adjust this keyframe position so that it matches up better with the icons. So let's play this back. Okay, so currently if I go frame by frame, you'll see it's not really aligned with the icons the way that I want it. So I'll just go over a little bit and we'll drag out this keyframe. So somewhere like here and let's play this back. All right. That's looking better. So let's just play that one more time. Yeah, you could go and really fine tune this, bring in your keyframes one second this way, one second that way, you know, take your time, be finicky with it. But for the sake of this, it's looking good to me. So let's just watch the whole thing one more time. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, beautiful. The next thing that we want to add in is the color effect so that when our filters are being selected, the screen becomes the color of that filter. So I'm gonna just close up these again and we will right click, go to new, solid. So for this first one, what we want to do is create a blue filter. So I'm gonna use the eyedropper tool by pressing it and then pressing over this blue filter. And now we have selected that color. And for this, I'm just going to change the color to blue, just so it's not this very long name and it's easier for me to see over here. So I will press and drag this up to the top. And you'll see right now it is covering everything. That's because we have it at 100% opacity. So I'm going to toggle down the settings again, and I'm just going to click to change the opacity. We'll bring it down to something like a 50%. So now you can actually see what you're doing, right? <laughs> so let's go back over to the mouse and we can see where we selected the keyframes for this blue to be selected. So around here where we make our mouse click is where I'm gonna create the start point for this blue filter. So I'm gonna drag over this red line snap it over here so it is aligned with that keyframe for the mouse click and then we will go over to the next mouse click so right here right right here and i will drag in hmm, let me bring this over so that i can just change this there we go so i'm gonna bring this over to right here Oh, you know what? It moved over. So let's just adjust that real quick. So I'm going to drag this over right here. Now it is aligned with that mouse click for the blue. We're going to go over to the center keyframe, which is where the mouse for the orange is now being clicked. And I will just drag this in. So now when it goes to the orange, 
it won't be looking blue anymore. So now let's do the same thing. We'll do that for the orange. So I'm going to toggle this up, right click, new, solid, and I'll call this orange. And then use the eyedropper tool and select orange. I'll press OK. So again, we will toggle this down, toggle down transform, and we'll change the opacity to 50. And then again, we will just drag in these sides. So we'll drag this in to align with where the blue filter ends. And then we will scrub over to this middle keyframe where the mouse clicks on the pink filter. And I'm just gonna scrub over and drag this in and snap it to our playhead. And then we will do that one more time for pink. So let me toggle this up to close it. Right click, new, solid, and I will call this pink. And then use the eyedropper tool and select pink. We'll press OK. Again, we will toggle this down, toggle down, transform, change opacity to 50%. And now we will drag in the sides. So right there. And then we will go over to the next keyframe where we make our final mouse click. And I will scrub over and then drag in this red line, align it with the playhead. And now if we play this back, you'll see that we have that filter effect created. All right. So now what I'm going to do is just drag this over again. And you can actually go over to six seconds and bring in all of these different elements and just make sure that they all end at six seconds. So I'll just bring these over. And then I will also bring this over to six seconds. And now it is looking good. So to take this over to Premiere, let's say we want to make this into a motion graphic template. What we can do is add some properties so that we can change the brand name when we're over in Premiere. So to do that, I am going to go over to brand name, toggle this down, toggle down text, and then where it says source text, I'm going to press and drag this over right here into our essential graphics panel. So now we have essentially created like a preset for the brand name and we can change out the text. So right here in this panel, this is the label for what this text box is going to be called over in Premiere. So let's say for this, we want to call it brand name. And I know it might look a little bit confusing right now because it's brand name, brand name. So if I change this to, let's do the name of one of the brands we'll do like Monday Born, for example. So now in our animation, you'll see the text has been changed to Monday Born. So this is how it's basically going to work in Premiere. Whatever you put the text to in here is what it will show up as on screen. And since we already went ahead and aligned this to the center and all that, when we do it in Premiere, no matter what you type in, it will be centered. So let's do another brand name. For example, let's do Rosalie Agency. And there we go. So we'll just go back and do brand name. And what I can do is now export this as a motion graphic template. So you can give it a name up here. I can call this whatever I want. So let's just do unfiltered beauty demo. And then I can also select where in this timeline I want to select as my icon for this preset. So if I have my playhead right here and I press set poster time, it will now appear like this in Premiere. But I don't want that. I want it to be at the beginning so I can really see the filters and where it says unfiltered beauty. So I'm gonna press over here and I'll have my playhead towards the beginning. And then I will set poster time. And now in Premiere, this is the little icon that I can look out for and know this is gonna be my intro graphic. So now, from here, you will export motion graphics template. Of course, yes, we will save this project first. So we will call this BB 
intro demo. I'll just save this and you will bring up this box in Premiere or rather uh, After Effects, it will bring up this box. You just press okay and there we go. So now if we go over to Premiere, now you'll see if we go over to the Essential Graphics panel, which if you don't know how to get to that, you can just go up here. You'll see you have all these different workspaces. So if I go to Queen, for example, this is like my custom workspace, you won't really see essential graphics. You can go over to graphics and now on the right, our essential graphics panel has been brought up. So from here to add your Mogurt, your motion graphic template, you're gonna go down here to the bottom right and press install motion graphic template. So now if we go over to where we saved it, let's see, we have the unfiltered beauty intro. I can just press open and then uh, it'll basically import it into Premiere. So I'm gonna press cancel because I already have that in here. I don't wanna get confused. <laughs> so I'm gonna drag all the way down and you'll see we have our unfiltered beauty intro. So now to add this to our timeline in Premiere, what you can do is just press and drag this over to your timeline, let go. And there you go. It has been added to your timeline. So now if I play this, you will see it is going through and doing all our little animations and stuff like that. So as I mentioned, you can change the brand name. So right here, it says brand. Let's say I want to change that to Monday Born, which is the name of the brand that I interviewed for this series. So I'm going to select this right here. This is our intro. And then right here in edit within essential graphics, it'll bring up this panel where it's a brand name. And right here it says brand. So let's say I want to call this Monday Born. I can do that. And then you see, I also added text properties so that I could scale this up if I wanted to. So to do that, you would just do the same thing in After Effects. You would just add that over to your essential graphics panel. So let's go back to After Effects and we will go over to the, which one was it? Mm -hmm. So you can do scale, for example, if you wanted to. You can honestly play around with this and do whatever you want. Where was it for the text? You know, I can't remember right now, but is it? it's in here. <laughs> it is early in the morning and I can't remember, but I know it's in there. Um, so again, if you just want to go through and add these different effects in here, you can do that. You can change the name. So for this one, we know that this is our scale. So we'll just do that. And then that will allow us to scale up the text for the brand name when it comes up right here. So that's basically how you do that. You would, again, just export this as a motion graphic template and then bring it back into Premiere. So something else that I wanna show you real quick, we have a little bit of time remaining. What I'm gonna do is show you how to create shapes. So let's say you wanna create an outro. So we'll go up here to our shapes, we'll select the rectangle tool. You can press and hold to select the rectangle and make sure that you're not on the brand name because otherwise you're creating a mask. <laughs> there we go. So now we have a shape and let's say we want this to be some sort of color and maybe let's do bring this down and we can see our opacity. I'm just going to bring this to 100% opacity. So that's how you create a shape for a rectangle. And then we'll go back here, we'll press and hold, we'll select the ellipse tool and we will create a circle. And that's more or less how you would create these for your outro template. So really easy. You can go in and change the colors if you wanted to. You can take some time to adjust the positioning and all of that using your align tools. 
but it's really simple. You can also go in and add text if you wanted to, so you can make it say like, watch next, or you could do another one and like add subscribe over here. But yeah, really easy, really simple. And that is in a nutshell, how you do intro motion graphics in Illustrator, After Effects and Premiere, <laughs> using them all together to make a really epic outro and intro motion graphic. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I hope you found this helpful. Make sure to stay tuned because up next is the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge right here on Behance, where we have so many other amazing streams all day long. So stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Bye everyone. Thank you.